Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animal Orange and welcome to another Metal Earth build video. If you haven't guessed by the title already today, we are going to work on Boba Fett's helmet. It's another one of the helmet series models. Almost got carried away with my S's there. I've already done a couple of them. It's been a long break between unintentional. A lot of Star Wars models have come out. We're going to put this together today. The packaging doesn't really have a difficulty model, but we're going to guess it's kind of on the medium easy side. Let's go over to the table, open this up, and, and see for ourselves. All right, let's open up Boba's Fett's helmet here. Start putting this together. It's been a while since I've done a Star Wars helmet. A lot of stuff kept coming out, and I had trouble keeping up. We've got our instructions. Looks like we've got two metal sheets. One and two. As usual, the uncolored side is facing each other, so if they scratch in shipping, it's not that big a deal. But we have some rather large parts here, so maybe, maybe this will be an easy build. Let's open up the instructions and go over them ever so briefly for the folks that might be new at building these models. If you know how this goes, just bear with me or skip ahead a little bit. We open up the set of instructions. This only comes with one sheet because it's a simpler model. What we have is the Star Wars Metal Earth logo. We have a line drawing of the model in one, in, uh, one of the sheets. And we have a 360 view QR code you can scan or just type in this website here where you can go see a completed model that you can spin around and look at for reference sake. Below that we have a sample part with a notation on insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Fold lines are basically pre-scored areas where the part folds. And insertion tabs ultimately go into insertion holes. That's how all of this comes together. Beside that, we have a Legends, which has a lot of stuff that I'm familiar with, and one thing that's a bit new. But top we have an E for engraved side, and E for non-engraved side, it's going to be pointing at the engraved and non-engraved side of the model. But don't get fold lines mixed up as engraving because that's actually something different. And P, we have a P here pointing at the painted side. So I think this came out in a transition period when they were starting with painted models before they started to include the painted side with E and with the E as in engraved slash painted. So I think I've, I've kind of fallen back into a model where they've transitioned. But... Below that we have a hand, if you happen to see that in the instructions anywhere, it's usually it's an attention point and it's usually trying to tell you how to align something, though it can be for different reasons why it's there, and it's not even in every build, but they tend to include it in the legends. Below that we have a blue circle and green triangle. When you see a blue circle at a connection point, it means to insert a tab and fold it to 90 degrees. When you see a green triangle at a connection point, it means to insert a tab and twist it to 90 degrees. The twisted tabs are more secure, but not necessarily as clean looking. We have a assembly tip that's basically saying if you have a shaky part, it's good to lightly twist tabs until you get more of the model together, and then you can come back and untwist and fold those tabs over for a cleaner look. Here we've got a bit about tools. We're going to talk about tools here in a moment. Below that, we have the two sheets that come with, or an outline of the two metal sheets that come with this model. I'm going to grab one looks like I have grabbed sheet B you can kind of see that this is an outline of what's on this sheet all the parts are numbered so you can easily find them and the sheets are numbered are lettered A and B so you know which sheet to look for the part on you also notice that most of the parts are just blank outlined clear but some have color filled in the ones that have the color filled in are duplicate parts so like we have part 14 here they're both yellow they're probably like the side ear pieces. They're the same on both sides. Over here we have a large green piece. We have two of them. They are the same part and probably use them more than one place. But the fact that they're colored in is going to make them a lot easier and quicker to find. Moving over to page two, we have the start of the assembly flow chart. Basically, you start with part one, which is on sheet A. Go to sheet A, find that, clip it out, come back here and you can kind of see there's some arrows trying to indicate how this part folds and the red part the parts that are highlighted red are the parts that you're shaping this part right here that's not highlighted you're not shaping it you're not bending it but you are bending this part 
looks like you're kind of bending an angle here and bending this back at a bit of a curve and then this tab connects in this slot and folds over and then you've got this shape here and then we have part two which is on sheet A you've got to clip that out down here you can see it's highlighted red and there's a big curved line that's basically telling you to curve that part around and then these tabs get bent over on this part you just shaped earlier and connect into slots here with folded over tabs and you end up with this piece over here so actually a lot happening in this first page just a lot of indication of how to fold things but the large parts you come down to the next line and you've got part three which is similar to part one looks like the opposite side shape it Part four, curve it around, these connect together, fold the tabs, you end up with that. That's the gist of it. You just go across, go down and across, and add in and shape and add the parts together as instructed. Get to the bottom, flip over to page three, continue on, page four, continue on. And when you get to the bottom, you are finished with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about some tools. And I've got what I consider the basic set in front of me, starting with a pair of flush clippers or side clippers. These are primarily used to cut the parts out of the sheets. You can get the parts out by folding and twisting, though you run the risk of breaking something you didn't mean to break. A good pointed set of side cutters or flush cutters, like this Play-Doh set that I've got here, work really great for quickly getting the parts out so you can get on with your build. I have, of course, a small selection of tweezers. We've got a fairly basic set. This actually came with one of the older Iconics sets, and I've been using it for quite a while. But a good sturdy flat end tweezers can come in really handy for doing a great number of things. I also have a few pieces from a precision set of tweezers. If you need some precision tweezers, just search precision tweezers online. You'll be able to find something out there. These two are very similar. They have a very fine point, though I did grind the tip of these down to help me grab tabs. And then this is just kind of a flat set for getting in tight spaces. And then we have couple of pieces left over from the Fascinations three-piece set. I broke the clippers long ago, so I had to replace them. But we have long nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Really handy. These are handy for bending long parts. And these are handy for bending short sections right here. But this is the basic set. We'll do a great amount of things with just this set right here. You'll be able to build a lot of different models and do a lot of different things. We talked a little bit about some tools got the basics to get me started here going over the instructions ever so briefly got our metal sheets more or less at the ready I'm gonna organize this and we'll get started on this build I nearly folded this inside out, but thinking back to the confusion of the Darth Vader helmet and taking a peek at the picture on the package, I realized this dips in when folded. Looks like I need to shape this a bit more. It's a bit too wide to fit.
The two parts don't sit together as seamlessly as I would like.
almost had it, but the tab slipped out. The instructions show folding the two inner tabs inward and the two outer tabs outward for part 8, suggesting that the outer edges go over and the inner section being on the inside. I started to do it like that, but it just did not make any sense. I switched to folding all the tabs inward and it worked just fine. The instructions gave a tip that I had not thought about before. It suggested folding in the tabs 90 degrees, which I have done before, but also suggested folding the slots at 45 degrees before attaching. What a good idea. It seemed to work fairly well.
In a stroke of pure luck, I lined the top of the helmet properly. I almost didn't because I was not paying enough attention, but the parts slipped, and when I tried to attach them again, I got it right. This one tab absolutely did not want to go into place. The tab and slot didn't quite line up. I made several attempts, but it ended up folding over two or three times by mistake instead of going in its slot, and I gave up because at this point the tab is just going to break off if I keep trying.
This long middle section was a pain to fold over. I've almost got it. Almost forgot to add this bit in. I can certainly do without these tabs being angled out slightly. It made it tougher to get them into their slots.
It looks like at the end of this piece that folds over, there's one more narrow fold in and then the stick folds back out and down. I'm not about to attempt that. That's just too narrow an edge and too tight a space and not enough room. I'll just say this assembly resisted and fought back, which led to it getting a little bent, and then correcting the bend led to tabs popping out. It definitely resisted.
and that brings us to the end of this build not quite as easy as I hoped but still not a difficult model it took about an hour to put this thing together so yeah I wouldn't rate it as a medium to medium easy build it's not that it's complicated it's just a few things didn't want to go the way I thought they should go there's some fair amount of hand shaping and struggling with getting parts to squeeze together really not a tough model it is a little bit challenging up here but not not, not bad now I am told by the two models that I started with with the helmets I've already done Darth Vader's helmet and Luke Skywalker's helmet which I'm told are the toughest of the two I kind of expected this to be easier than it was still a little bit challenging but there you go well, it was a bit of an issue with getting one of the tabs in and getting this top dome part to look quite right. I'm not satisfied with it, but that back tab simply would not line up with its slot, and that caused some issue. This thing up here was fun to shape, and if you look, it kind of looks like there's one little tiny flap left that should be folded in, and then the stick bit back down so that it fits. There's no way I'm going to tackle that tiny little piece there with all this stuff in the way. There was no way I was going to try and bend that over I had enough problems getting this folded over properly and getting the rest of the shapes. The instructions don't indicate that last fold, but there looks to be fold lines there where it should be. I'm not messing with it. This is good enough. I'm not going to cause myself any more trouble. But you saw the difficulties I went through. It's just some things not going right. Really not an overly difficult model. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to make a bit of a review about it here soon. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested. As always, thank you for watching. And keep on keeping on.